Okay, so at the moment you should see a page screen. Um, so this would be like any of your pages that you have your courses on a tutorial. Let me just zoom in a little bit. There we go. <laughs> and uh, you should be familiar with the menu and all of these things. Um, so at the moment we have a very limited menu here. This is just one of my test pages, but we're going to create a, an assignment now. So there are two ways of doing this. It's actually the same way, but I mean, there are two places where you can uh, insert or upload an assignment. Um, you can do it in your module. So if you call these learning units or so on. So if you're busy with a module and you have your lesson plan and so on, you can add your assignment just here in the same way so in between your lessons uh, or you can create a separate space on your menu for that and we're going to do that now so assignments are created in content areas under assessment so any content area you can build an assignment not a tool link though because tool links are specific to their tools so you won't be able to build content here you can only do that one functionality so we're going to go up to add menu item button, little plus sign. Always make sure that your edit mode is on. Uh, if you don't see your little plus sign, it's 99% of the time because your edit mode is switched off. Now, for some reason, this happens. Even if you didn't switch it off, every now and again, it just decides on its own, it's going to switch it off and then people get confused. So if you don't see your plus, just always check your edit mode. It's possibly that. Okay, so I'm going to go to add menu item content area and I'm going to call this one assignments I'm going to make it available to users straight away but you can leave this unchecked if this is an assignment that you're still working on you don't want students to see the content area yet and as with all our menu items it's going to go right to the bottom I'm going to drag it to another place and put it here under my modules now we can have a whole section for this. I kind of like having separate sections. It just makes it easier to navigate. So if this were my page, I would probably put in another divider here and maybe a subheader called assessments. And then I'll also have a test content area. Let me just put it up here. I'll probably also have a test and a portfolio of evidence content area or whatever the case may be. So, this is just a, a nice to have. This is not really part of the training, but I kind of like having all of my sections delineated so the students can find them easily. So we're gonna to go to our blank space now, which is a content area. And with all content areas, we have the option to build content, uh, which is not a part of today's training, assessments or link to tools within the uh, section. Partner content is for, um, Anyone who'd like to purchase from the market, you can purchase in your subject fields. Although I don't know anyone who does that because um, it's mostly US and Europe based and uh, we don't have the same context. Okay, so I'm gonna go to assessments and we're gonna create an assignment. Now, as with all things in Blackboard, the orange asterisk indicates that it's a required field. So in an assignment, the name and the points possible are required. So you need to have minimum these two items to be able to submit and have an assignment portal where students can upload. All the other things, all the other options and um, settings are optional. So I'm gonna call this assignment one. And you can give it a color if you want to, if you color code your, your items on Blackboard, it's always fun. And now we're going to put in some instructions. So I'm going to tell my students. Um, Okay, so today they're going to look at normal recipes of baking cake and what they need to do is they are going to adapt that recipe to be a vegan alternative. Now remember that your content editor is available in the assignment um, box so anything that you can do in your content editor you can do in an assignment and that means images, media, video, all of these things. We can play around with color so we can have 
I have it as a nice purple. Um, you can change your font. You can do anything that you want to add some emoji, emojis or symbols and things like that. So the first thing I'm going to do <coughs> is, okay, we said first there was going to be a video. So I've got a video ready here on YouTube and I'm going to copy this URL and I'm just going to paste it in and return or enter on your keyboard and the video will embed automatically. The second thing that I said is there's going to be an article. Okay, and this is the article. Again, I'm just going to copy the URL, paste and return so that it embeds. Okay, now I can add some more text here. Maybe I want to say uh, must be docx format uh, Arial. 12 PT, whatever the case may be, you'll know what you need to have here. Okay. And um, let's add a nice little image to make it fun. You know, I'm a sucker for a little GIF in my content. It's just always so much more fun to have some GIFs playing. All right. So that is my instructions that I've put in. And now the students will know what to do. Next thing up is assignment files. Now, these are, say, for instance, you have a template file. So I'm going to go browse local files. And say, for instance, I have a template for them and I want them to work on this document template. I can attach it here. Or maybe it's some extra resources, some uh, PDF documents or PowerPoints from the class we had or a video, any kind of document you can upload here. These will be for students to download. They can download them and then either use them as a template or watch them or read them or whatever the case may be. So that's a attachment files. And you can attach as many as you need to. So you can just keep attaching them um, and they will list all of them for the students. The next section here is the due date. Now, importantly, and a lot of people don't realize this, but due date in an assignment does not mean that a student will not be able to upload once the due date is passed. They will still be able to upload. The only difference is, is it's going to have a little late message next to the submission in the, in the needs marking section. So when you go through your list of needs marking, you'll see late next to the student who up loaded after the due date. So don't confuse the due date with the availability end date. The availability end date is when the assignment closes, which means they will not be able to see it anymore. But up until this date here, a student will be able to upload, even if it is after the due date, it will only mark it as late in the needs grading. Okay, so we're going to say this is due tomorrow. Oh, new month already, scary. Um, and then I'm going to put in a time. Just as a side note, and this is just something that we like to mention, it's not, you know, a lot of lecturers select end of day for their assignments. Um, this is fine. Remember, a lot of students have data packages that give them cheap data, but mostly those are anyway past midnight, those free data packages. So they'll have like uh, a, a package that is 10 gig um, anytime, and then they have free 10 gig between midnight and four. So make sure what kind of data packages you have, because most of the students have ones that won't, you know, it won't help having it at end of day. Uh, because um, the data package, cheap data packages only start from midnight anyway. And then what happens is you don't have support for the students at this time. And you know students, they will always wait till 99, you know, before they upload. And then we can't help them if they have any problems. Um, so remember that when choosing your date, it's, it's a lot of people cite that it's because of data packages. But in fact, most of these cheap data packages start at midnight. So it's, it, it's not even helping. So I like to do it in the middle of the day um, so that if a student has problems, you know, they can contact the e-learning person or they can contact you or whatever the case may be. Because, you know, students, they always wait till the last minute to do their homework. Um, right. So that is the due date. Sorry, that was a bit of a rant. You won't believe how many students call us after hours. Um, points possible. So I'm going to put in 100 points here just now, but it's going to change now as we build the rubric. So I've just selected 100 points. Now, two ways of doing a rubric. I'm going to show you the first where we do it inside 
the assignment, but you can also pre-build the rubric in your course tools. So course tools are here. And you'll see that we have rubrics here. So we can go and build a rubric here and then select it. So here are all my rubrics that are already built. Or we can create a new rubric inside the assignment. And that's what we're going to do today. Okay, it's going to open up a new tab. So I'm just going to expand that so you can see it nicely. And again, we'll have a name and you'll see again that it is required. And I'm going to call this vague. Okay. Again, you can have descriptions, but this description is for the rubric only. Um, so you don't need to fill this out because your instructions are already in the assignment. But if you have a lot of rubrics, um, a description might be helpful for you to just, you know, differentiate between them. Uh, rubric details. So here is our rubric. So most of us use a three tier rubric, which is nice because it's already defaulted up, but you can add columns if you use four, five, six tiered rubrics. And then we have our rows as we always have. Now, first things first that we do is we select the rubric type. By default, it will be on percentage. Okay. So if this is the way you use your rubric, perfect. You just leave it on it. But the other choices are to have no points. So if you have a rubric that doesn't have any points, it's just for instruction or for like a roadmap for students, you select no points. Then we have points where we put in like one, two, three, only single fields here for the points. Points range where we have multiple fields. So we can have one, two, three, four, two, seven. And then we have the same for percent and percentage range. So I'm gonna put in a points range one today. It's just easier to set up because we don't have to weight them, um, but they work exactly the same. Okay, so that's my rubric type selected. Now let's have a look at my criteria. So I'm going to have five criteria here and I only have three to work with. So I'm going to add two rows. Okay, so they've got a couple of default names here, formatting, organization and grammar. I don't want that. I'm going to edit them. So remember the little menu next to it. And I'm going to say the first one is um, I'm just making up things. I really don't know what we are going to be looking at for this assignment. I don't even really bake. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we've got five rows now that we've edited, and these are going to be our rows. Now let's have a look at our three tiers. Now, novice, competent, and proficient are normally fine, but you can change them um, if you use maybe the fail, pass, excel system. Just change them. And then we can start putting in our points. So I'm going to say this is uh, worth one, two, three, four, two, seven. And what happens is every time you complete or fill in the last uh, points field, it will start adding up at the bottom for you. So you don't even need to keep track yourself. You can just see where you're at. Um, let's do the same for this one. And then of course, some items might be worth more. So let's do six. And then language, I'm only going to do one, two, two, and three. So this means there's only going to be one option here, one or two or three. <laughs> and that gives me uh, 63, which is ridiculous. 
it doesn't really matter right now. Let's do it this way. I don't know why. Okay. Okay. 65. Good. Now we've got our points in, we've got our rows and columns. Now we can add, but remember this is optional. You don't have to, if you don't want to, you can add criteria for what under the ingredients list is a fail. So I'm just going to say no ingredients list. You'll probably have something um, nicer. And then adequate. And I'm going to show you when we mark it, these show up for, it can show up both for the students and for you. And it does really improve your marking speed um, and it, your whole workflow is improved by using the rubrics I find. <clears throat> it's a really great tool, especially if you have very large classes. Okay, I'm not going to fill all of them in. Um, I'm just going to do the first three, but you can keep going and fill all of them in so that the students and you know exactly what is expected under each criteria. Okay, so once we're done with our rubric and we're happy, we can just click submit. It's going to redirect us back to the um, eTutor page and it's going to bring up a little message that says, click OK to assign the rubric's maximum points as points possible. Now, remember, I quickly put in that 100 and this was just to show you this. It's not the same as what my rubric ended up to be, so I'm just going to say OK and it's going to automatically change it to that 65. Okay. Unfortunately, and a lot of people ask me that you can only have one rubric per assignment. Some people want to have more than one rubric because they have more than one marker. So some lecturers come and mark section A and the next lecture comes in and mark section B and so on. Unfortunately, you can't have that, uh, but you can both work on the same rubric. Okay, so when I have my rubric ready, I can view it. I can edit it if you need to make any changes, I can delete it. Okay, uh, leave it on use for marking. You can have, have it as secondary evaluation, which means it's not gonna pop up in your, and this is very specific. So leave it as used for marking, unless you really know that you're just gonna have it for secondary evaluation. Um, but I've never met a lecturer who uses this. So really just leave it there. This is important though, show rubric to students. Default it, it's no, so the student won't be able to see the rubric. You can select that yes, they can see with, the scores without the scores or only after it's been marked so you can go and select which is there i'm going to choose yes with rubric score so you can see what that looks like um, and i prefer this method because then the students also know exactly what is expected of them for the assignment all right the next couple of sections we have here are submission details marking options and display let's open up submission details now the first thing here we have is assignment type and we can have it as an individual a group or a portfolio submission. Now, please note, a lot of people don't understand this. If I select group, I need to have the groups made up before. So in other words, I need to have groups. And as you can see, there are no groups here in this subject. So if I select groups, <clears throat> It's going to tell me there are no groups here to select. Unfortunately, and which I hate, is it's going to allow me to still have it checked. And what happens now is no student is going to be able to see this assignment because no student is in a group that is allowed. So if I have a group, so I'm just quickly going to create a group. Just to show you what that is going to look like. I can think they are. I think those are the only requires. Gonna enroll someone. I don't think I need to enroll someone. I think it'd be fine like this. So now if I select a group, hmm, should be a group now. I was gonna, I need to, um, I would need to uh, reload and I can't do that now because I've put in so much already. So I'm not gonna do that. But what happens is if we have a group submission now and we, if we had groups, two boxes will appear here. The left one will show all the groups you have available. The left, uh, the right one will show you selected groups. So you move the groups that you want to participate in this assignment to the right box. Okay, um, afterwards I'll show you when we've done this. I'm, I'm just not gonna do it now. Otherwise I'll lose all of my work. Uh, number of attempts. So that's pretty self-explanatory. How many times do you want them to upload? Uh, let's say we give them two goes in case they miss one uh, or something happened. You know, load shedding is really causing us so many hassles now. Uh, when we have multiple attempts, which one is the one that's going to count? So which one is going to be the one that counts towards the final mark? Now, last marked attempt is normally makes the most sense because if a student uses the second attempt, it's because something went wrong with the first one. So that makes the most sense. But you can also select highest, lowest, first or average. I'm going to leave it on last. 
Then we have plagiarism tools. So in Blackboard, for the undergrads, we use SafeAssign. And you can do it directly here through the assignment. So if you want to check your submissions, you just say, yes, I'd like to check my submissions. Then you have two options here. Firstly, you can allow the students to view their own originality report. Okay, so we can check that. And then you can exclude the submission from our, so the institutional, so CUT, and the global, so the rest of the world's safe assigned databases. Now, what this means and why it's important to note is that if a student uploads a document now, and I do not have this checked, so it's unchecked, that document is going to go into the CUT and into the rest of the world's databases and now be used to compare along with all the others. So the next time a student uploads the same document, it will compare to itself. Now think about that as we have two attempts. If a student uploads attempt one, sees for instance that they need to work on their plagiarism and upload again, the document is now going to compare to itself again. The same will happen if you have an assignment that they hand in in term one that's going to form part of the bigger portfolio at the end of the year, you'll have problems with um, plagiarism. So only leave this unchecked if this is the final time this document is going to be uploaded and there's only a single attempt. So in this case, I'm going to check it. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't. I'm going to close this back up so we can open up marking options. Now, very importantly here, if we check anonymous marking, you cannot see the student's name during the marking process. Okay, so that might be something you want to do. That's fine, you can check that. But delegated marking, if you want to delegate marking, if you have more than one marker or instructor or lecturer on your page, and you want to say, for instance, okay, um, you know, instructor A is going to mark group one and instructor B is going to mark group two, that's fine. But just make sure that when you select your instructors that you give them the correct ones. So you can also give them a random set to mark, which is also fine. Um, or you can go and choose groups. So if you had groups in this page, they would appear in this list and so on. However, I'm going to say this. Enable uh, delegated marking normally just causes problems. So if you do want to use that, in other words, you have a very large group, maybe you have teaching assistants or you have lots of lectures and you want to mark, just check with me before and so I can help you set up for exactly what you want um, because uh, you have different functionalities for different lecturers and instructors and uh, those can only see what has been delegated to them and this sometimes causes problem then afterwards they have to be reconciliated and you know that's also more so if you do want to use delegate marking just send me a quick mail and ask me and i'll have a quick zoom session with you and we will set it up to it your needs because there's a lot of different ways of setting this up and it's quite confusing um, so remember that Okay, next one up is display of marks. So how are we gonna display this? Uh, it's defaulted on score. So in other words, if a student has 35, they see a 35. Um, so if they have percentage, they'll see the 60 odd something percent. I, my math isn't fast enough to do it. Um, so you can choose how it's gonna be displayed in the grade center. You can have two. You can have score as well, but then your grade center has two little columns inside the one column and it's quite cluttered. So I normally leave it on none, but you can have that if you like, um, but you can go and change it to whatever you want. It's also that letter and text, the things Americans use, you know, um, we don't bother with that. All right, including grade center marking calculations. So if you have columns that are calculated, so in other words, you have a average column or maybe a weighted column that this is going to form part of, yes, leave that checked. You can uncheck it if you want to, but there's really no need. It's nice to have it in your grade center and have it part of the um, calculated columns. Show to students in my marks, this is completely up to you. Do you want students to be able to see this or not? Uh, you can uncheck it. I know different departments have different views and policies on this. Um, for instance, term tests and assignments are often allowed to be viewed by students, the marks immediately, um, you know, but a semester or a, a main test or main assignment that forms part of exam time uh, sometimes are not allowed to be seen. So that completely depends on uh, what you're doing. 
Um, again, show average and medium is also different from department to department. Some departments don't allow you to show medians to the students or some do. So just check with your HOD what their feelings are on the matter if you don't know. Otherwise, you can either show it or not show it. All right, availability. It's going to be on make the assignment available, but you can uncheck this if you're still working on it and you want to leave and you want to submit so that everything is saved, or you can leave it on available um, so that it's available. And then we're going to limit availability according to dates. So I'm going to say make this available right now. And it's going to stay available till whenever. Okay, so that's just your availability dates. Remember not to be confused with the due date. And then finally, we can track the number of views. So we can track how many students opened up this assignment. Okay. And that is setting up an assignment with a rubric. And we're going to submit. <clears throat> Just take a sip of water. All right. You can test your um, assignment if you like to by just clicking on it. And you can see exactly what your students are going to see. So you can see. All right, they can see the due date, they can view the rubric. Oh yes, with the scores, like I said it should, good points possible, they can watch the video. So you can experience it exactly the same way your students would click on the link. Oops, not sure why that link, just always double check your links because sometimes they do that. Um, some websites don't like it if you steal their <laughs> their articles but I just used it for this you will probably have articles anywhere from reputable sources um okay and I can see that my plagiarism detection is switched on and the students will be able to view it and there is the file that I wanted them to download okay everything looks good and you can even go as far as checking it as a student by going and uploading the same way a student would it won't upload because you don't have a student space but it does give you an idea of what it's going to look like. And you'll see it would say, yeah, submission from previous assignment is not safe. That's because you are the instructor and you are not a student on the subject. It's just kind of going through the steps of seeing how the assignment is going to appear to them. Okay. So our assignment is set up. It's open. Our students can go and find it. Now, let's make sure my content area is open. So if it says hide link, instead of saying show link, it means it's open. So I'm going to show it. That's open. It is open to my students. My data all on. Everything looks good. Right now I'm going to go to student mode. We're going to hand something in and then I'm going to show you how to mark it. I just have to remember what. I think it's the subject we're on. Okay, so the student's gonna come. Oh, ma'am, I have to do another assignment. Oh, here we go. Read the stuff, download the document, watch the video, see the email, oh, the attachment, everything, everything. And they're gonna open it up. Don't worry about students. We have videos available and we do cover it in orientation on how to do this. And um, so they do know how to do this if they came to orientation, but by now they've learned from friends who did go to orientation or watch the videos. And the student can view the rubric, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna hand in something. Got something pre-prepared here and students can upload any kind of document just a side note these are the only types of documents that is accepted by safe assign but it's only safe assign it means that it has to be a text-based which makes sense because it's looking for plagiarism so it has to be a text-based document but that does not mean they can't upload anything else on assignments they can upload absolutely any file so they can upload a video file an image file a pdf anything um, even your uh, software proprietary files for those of you in engineering and so on who use specific software to um, you know maybe 3d design or something anything can be uploaded and you can upload as many as you need to so students can upload multiple files they just keep adding files and you have multiple files okay Student has uploaded, they have the option to put in a little comment. Um, mostly they'll just tell you why they're late. <laughs> and then when they're done, they submit. They will receive a number and I'm gonna show you how to track this number. So there's a little number and that number is unique to this submission. So the student will be able to, uh, sorry, the lecturer will be able to track that submission using this number. So it's a good idea for students to save this 
but if their emails are set up, it is emailed to them as well. Okay, students will be able to see their own assignment. Because we had multiple attempts, they have a start new button here. Um, they can upload again. If they, you didn't have, if it was only one attempt, or if they used all the attempts, they'll only have the okay button here. Okay, so whilst you, while the assignment is open, so in other words, I think we said tomorrow or the day after somewhere, while the assignment is open, students can always come back, click on it, and view the document that they've uploaded or start new if they still have time and they still have uh, attempts left. They can also come back and have a look at the match. Now it's pretty high and that's because I stole the recipe from the internet. <laughs> so that's quite high, okay. That's the student view. Let's move back now to your side. All right, so now the due date is passed. You're gonna go and mark your assignment. You can come into your page and then go down to <clears throat> your grade center, expand that, needs marking. And then you'll find a list of all of your um, attempts here by your students. I only have one now, um, but you'll have a whole list of them. You can filter them a little bit. So if you want to maybe just filter them to all the assignment one ones. Uh, if you, for instance, had multiple assignments going on, but you only want to mark assignment one today, you can filter them here or by users. If you only want to mark one specific user or so on, uh, you can filter anyway. But I've only got one, so I'm going to click on it there on the student attempt, the user attempt. It's going to open up this page. Now I'll just give it a second to load that document. And there we go, I can see the student's inline document. So this will work for PDF, uh, documents, uh, PowerPoint files, um, most of the, uh, you know, Microsoft files. Unfortunately, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna work for those documents that we talked about that needs a specific software to open them up. In that case, you'll just have to download it here. So here's the little download button. If you wanna download it to your computer, maybe for reference later, or if it's one of those files. Otherwise we can just mark in Blackboard, which we're gonna do now. Now, one thing that really annoys me in Blackboard is the rubric is here for some reason. So it's hidden, just there. I don't know why they decided to hide it here, probably to make my life miserable. But yeah, so you just go and expand that and there's your rubric. Not sure why it's over there. So we can open it up and it's gonna bring up the rubric like so. Okay, if I click on one of these, I can select because I had point range, I can select one, two, three. And it's gonna keep tally for me. And so on, so you just keep going through your rubric and give them their scores. Okay, now it's gonna calculate the total for you automatically, but you can change it if you want to. So you can um, put in your own score there if you feel like the student should get 42. If, if it's in one of those cases where they need literally a point something just to pass and you just wanna put it in. And then you've got a little box here that you give feedback to. Okay, now I'm gonna save the rubric and show you one other thing. There's another way of doing the rubric. So this is in line. This means that it's in line, it's still in Blackboard. This one is in new window. So you can do it both ways. And in new window, it looks like that. And now you can mark it this way. Same, same thing, just like this. The only difference is, is if you mark it in a new window, you have a feedback box under each section. So instead of only having the big feedback box, I don't know why I said big, but yeah, the main feedback box, you also have separate feedback boxes where you can put it so you can actually give the student feedback on the quality on the steps you know and you can tell them not enough yeah or whatever the case may be so that's the difference between inline and in new window otherwise they're exactly the same okay we can give feedback again I think there's like six spaces for you to give feedback to learners it's really quite nice you can do it any way you want to um all right so I've marked it now I want to go and have a look at this safe assign so I'm going to click on the 26 percent overall match I'm going to view the originality report it's going to open in a new tab in my browser 
And this is what it's going to look like. It's going to have the student name at the top, the assignment details, and then the assignment. And then everything that is colored up nicely is what has been stolen, not necessarily. You have to use your own judgment to decide whether or not it's plagiarism. This, the software can only check for originality. It can compare to other things. It cannot tell you that the student intended to plagiarize. That is something only you as the human can do. But you can now go and have a look. All right. Uh, let's have a look at some of these. Some four of them came from the internet and one of them came from the Safe Assign Global Database. So I'm going to open up the internet ones. Let's have a look at the purple ones. Oops, no, I unhighlight. I want to go and have a look at it. Four. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to show me that's a pretty high match. This is my student's paper and this is the original source. So you can go and have a look at whether or not you think that this is a problem. So you can go through all of them like this. And you can exclude some if you want to. So I'm going to go and say, you know what? This one isn't, isn't plagiarism at all. I'm going to dismiss it. And then you want to refresh report. I'm not going to do it now because it takes a while to refresh and we want to move on. Um, but then you can exclude and it's going to change then that 24% um, to whatever the new percentage is. Okay, so I'm just going to close that up. Uh, when you exclude sources, it will always stay on the report. It will just um, show your percentage or something different, but you will see that there's a list of excluded. Okay, you can print this or download it, but you know, if you're happy with it, you can just exit. It's saved. You don't have to save anything. It's, it's a live report, so we can go back to it and see the same thing. Okay, I'm going to close that back up. And now let's do some inline grading, which means we're going to draw on this paper or do anything like that. So your inline grading tools will all be here at the top. And we have a couple of tool options here. We can have text boxes, so you can write on the document. Comments, so you can put up little sticky notes. That the student can see and they can reply to it. We can add an image. This is very helpful if you need to put your signature on. So let's add one now. So I'm gonna add my signature here. And we can add a text box to put in that. It was done on 29.222. Um, but the base tool that most of you enjoy is the pen tool. So the pen tool, and you select a color. So I'm going to leave it on red, but there are multiple colors. So if your moderator comes in, they can swap too. And then we can do things like, because as teachers, lecturers, we love to do this. Sorry, let me just grab the pen again. And so on. All right, so that is the pen tool. And here are all of the tools, you know, functions. Uh, you can make it larger, smaller, the thickness of the lines, opacity. Um, you know, things like that, paint bucket and all that. All right, so you can go and play around with some of the paint tools. Uh, you can also enlarge it. No, oh, wait, that's making it smaller. It's supposed to make it, why is it not? Sorry, it's supposed to make it a oh, fit page. I thought it was the expander. Which one is the expander then? Anyway, all right, so let's move on to page two. We can do the same thing. Um, put in text, put in any of these things. Okay, so that is the inline grading, and then the student will view it as is. You can also download this document. So there are two download methods you can download from here, so from the inline grading panel. That means it's going to download as a PDF along with your annotation. So if I download that document, it's going to download a PDF and it's going to have all of my annotations. There is the little comment, my signature, et cetera, et cetera. Or if you want to allow uh, download the original document, you go to the assignment box and you can download the original document here. There's its little download button. And if I download it here, it's going to open up the original Word document as uploaded by the student. All right, so once we're done, um, I've got my points in there for the student that was done by the rubric. You can always override them here as well, but just highlighting them and putting in a new mark. And then we click submit. And as soon as we've submitted, it's gonna disappear from the needs marking area. And it's gonna go straight to your full grade center. 
Now, new items are always on the far right. I don't have any um, other things in this grade center, so it's just here on the first page. But normally, you have to scroll to the far right to see your new um, assignments. All right, so here we see assignment one, and there's one student. Um, it's color coded, which yours might not be. If I want to re access that assignment, I can always make changes to it. So maybe the student came with um, you know, a doctor's note or an excuse or something like that. I go to the grade center, to the row in which the student is, the column of the assignment, go to that cell, access its menu, go to attempt. And it's going to take me back to that attempt. And now I can make any changes I want. So I can add new comments to the student. I can keep inline grading. Or if it's your, mo your um, moderator coming in now, they can do their bit. Um, and I can even re, um, you know, resubmit the mark. Okay, so we can do all of that from the grade center. Another thing that you can do is if you are um, archiving or for getting ready for an audit or something, you can bulk download your assignments here as well. So in your full grade center, go to the column of the assignment, access its little menu, and then say assignment file download and it will download all of the assignments, all of the documents handed in by your student for this. All right, that is it, ladies and gents, for assignments and rubrics. I'm going to open up for questions. You are welcome to put your questions in the chat box. Please remember to complete the um, attendance register. The link is in the chat box. Um, so that I can report back to your assistant deans. And um, so please open up for questions. You can unmute yourself or you can put it in the chat box if you don't have a microphone, whichever you prefer. Remember that I will be uploading this video later to our YouTube channel. So if we go, the YouTube channel is called CUT eLearning and Educational Technology. So just go into YouTube and search for that. And you'll see that under playlists, we have an Etudo Talks playlist. And every week I upload these videos and I put the little date next to them so you can see there's last week's that we did on course tools and so on. So you can access previous ones and the new ones will be up by this afternoon if you want to just look back for reference. All right, please ask me some questions. Can you make changes to the rubric once there's an assignment submitted? That's a good question. I've never tried that. Let's do it. Okay, so we've already marked a student with that rubric. So let's see if we can make changes to the rubric. I've never tried this. Okay, so I'm going to come to my rubric. Edit. Now, for instance, nope, there we go. Okay, so I also learned something. You cannot change after it's already been marked. So you see, I don't have the capability of editing. So thank you, Dr. Willyfield, for that question. Now I've learned something as well. So no, unfortunately, you cannot change the rubric after you've marked, which is a nice thing in the tests. You can change questions and it will automatically update. Not for an assignment. All right, some more questions. Uh, if you have any questions regarding something other than assignment, obviously not something that's going to take very long. You're also welcome. All right, I think everyone is tired and ready to go have weekend. Um, so let's end this here today. I'm going to stop the recording as well. So we keep it nice and short. And then I will wish you all a happy weekend.